Welcome to New Hanover Evangelical Lutheran Church as we worship today the Lord's Ascension and also everybody's out there to, uh, celebrating. I hope you're celebrating and find ways to celebrate uh, Memorial Day in any way you can, being isolated and or not isolated, go to a park and uh, be at home, cook some burgers, hot dogs, whatever you normally do during uh, Memorial Day weekend, go out and enjoy yourself, I hope. Um, if you want, uh, please get your hymn sheets together, and if you don't have one that uh, is here from the church, you can go on our website at newhanoverlutheran.org and download one, and uh, they're there located under worship materials. Also, uh, get your bread and beverage and prepare for communion today, and uh, also get a candle. Bring in the presence of Christ, as we do, and uh, light a candle today. Uh, also, um, very important, last but not least, open your Bibles because we're going to be using those today for our readings. So let us begin this service. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And one other acclamation. Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to a new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In a desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. And at the cross you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in its font, and for water all over where. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you, Almighty God, give an honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Turn to your hymn sheets right now and join together and let us rejoice. Hallelujah! Sing to Jesus!
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, amid all the turmoil and changes of the world, your love is steadfast and your strength never fails. In this time of danger and trouble, be to us a sure guardian and rocket defense. Guide the leaders of our nations with your wisdom, comfort those in distress, and grant us courage, almighty God, and give us hope, hope to face the future, no matter what the future has for us in store. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, Amen. At that time, uh, pick up your Bibles and uh, please open your Bibles to the book of Acts and hear the word of God. The first reading is from Acts chapter 1, verses 6 through 14. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when, when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Here ends the reading. Good all the children, please come forward. Come on, come on, come on down. Come on, get right up to the TV set, get up to those TV screens or your phone screens or your iPad, whatever device you're looking on, get on right down. We have a very special guest today sharing with us the message. Hey everyone, I'm so glad you're here with us today for our children's message. So in our Bible story today, Jesus knows he is going to die, and he is praying for his disciples that are still going to be here on earth. He prays that God will protect them because he really cares about them. So since our story has to do with prayer, I want to talk about praying today. Do you know that there are so many different ways to pray? You can pray at any time and anywhere, and God will always listen to you. I think it's pretty cool to know that there is always someone there that's always ready to listen no matter what you need to talk about. So I don't know about you, but I love being outside when it's nice like it is today. So I came up with a way we can pray when we're outside and it's called bubble prayer. You gonna do it with us? Okay, so we're gonna take our bubbles and we're gonna think about a prayer that we wanna pray. We're gonna say it and then we're gonna blow the bubbles and the bubbles are gonna send our prayer to God. All right, so let's practice. This is what it's going to look like. I'm gonna say, God, I pray that you will keep all of my friends and family safe, and then we'll send it to God. Ready? There it goes, my prayer went to God. Or maybe I'll say, God, I pray that you would be with everyone who is feeling sick, and then I'll send that prayer to God. Yeah. How about this one? God, I pray that you will be with me when I'm feeling scared. Okay, and let's do one more together. God, I pray for everyone that I am missing at NAGLC. So I think that's a pretty fun way to pray. So the next time you're outside, if you have some bubbles, I want you to practice praying like that, okay? I hope that everyone has an awesome day today. Bye. Let's again open up our Bible today and join um, the apostles as we turn your Bibles and open up the first Peter chapter four. The second reading is from first Peter chapter four, verses 12 through 14 and chapter five, 
verses 6 through 11. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exult you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourself, keep alert, like a roaring lion, your adversary. The devil prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith. For you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the gods of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Here ends the reading. Turn back to your song page if you printed it out, and let's sing together. Be not afraid. Christ or our gospel, but first I ask you to open your Bibles to the book of Acts uh, chapter 1. And I think uh, today we got to read both of these accounts of the ascension uh, to really get a true meaning of what it means to ascend, or as I like to say, act up. Listen to the words of Christ. Jesus, Luke writes, in a first book, Theopolis, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, and after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me, for John the baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times and periods that the Father has set by his own authority but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in that Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out to their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men with white robes stood by them, and they said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Let's end our reading. Second reading comes from the Gospel of Luke and chapter 24. So if you turn now, Luke 24, verses 44 to 53. Jesus said to the eleven and those with them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Palm must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and you see I am sending you what my Father has promised. 
So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in a temple, blessing God. The words of the Lord. <sighs> reading these two readings this past week and thinking about Ascension, I, um, you know, we're in a time of crisis, so I wanted to focus on what does it mean to ascend into a time of crisis? What does it mean? We had this book of Acts we've been reading all through Easter. What does it mean to act up in the spirit? Well, the first question that, that struck me while reading is, is that it's the timing of things that seem to be critical in our lives today, right? The crucial things that we search for on the TV, on our devices, on the radio, whatever we may be getting our news sources from. When's it gonna end? When, when are we be able to leave the house? Here in Montgomery County, we're still in lockdown. We're still in the red zone, so to speak. When are we gonna be able to go to our restaurants, our favorite restaurants and eat there? When are we gonna see our favorite waitress or waiter or bartender or whoever it may be that used to take care of us? You know? When are we gonna be able to go out? When are we gonna be able to see our neighbors? These are all questions that we have. And you know, I'll, I'll beat this to death, but when are we gonna have an abundant supply of toilet paper? You know, our aisles sometimes are still empty. Where's it going? <laughs> this is a crucial question for me. And I find the disciples having the same questions as us in this time of crisis. Listen to the words again. It says, Lord, is this the time when you'll restore the kingdom of Israel? Is this the time? You get that? And he replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his authority. And I had to think when I read that, I was like, wow, well, thank you, Jesus, for being clearing that all up. Not. <laughs> oh, never the straightforward answer, huh? You, you know, in a crisis, truthful information is what we need and what we search for, right? We want the facts to make a very informed decision on ourselves. We do not want to be mere puppets or sheep led to slaughter, so to speak. We want to make informed decisions. We were given free will, and this is our nature. This is our original sin, so to speak. But, however, it's our ability to make decisions on our own that we are given by God. We are not puppets. This is not by fate. This is not, we are not robots programmed through life. So truth is needed in a time of crisis. However, as I just said, well, thanks a lot, Jesus. I think Jesus does give us the answer. And here it is. He delivers as he always does. Jesus tells them that the truth will be provided by the Holy Spirit in them, and each and every one of us as baptized believers. The truth that comes directly from God, which has been with God from the beginning of time. I think we missed that whole point that we are part of a creation story. This week, and for you scientists and people that love to have truth, I heard a very interesting fact that elements from the beginning of time that they know about how earths were formed or the universes were formed and God created, whether you call it creation or whether you call it the B-Bang, it doesn't matter. Whenever they look back to the beginning of time and they, they see what happened, there are certain molecules that were created to create everything. And they're in us. So I found that totally fascinating and interesting that those molecules and atoms that have been swirling around since the beginning of time and growing and dying and growing and dying are in us. We have been there from the beginning of time and 
God gives us essentially what we need from the time that the Spirit and Jesus Christ and God were together in the Trinity. The second question I have is, are we still looking up in the sky for the truth to be told to us? Are we still seeking? I mean, it's been five months now. Are we still just gazing up? God, when are you going to give us the answer? When are you going to lay your hand upon us? Do we find ourselves still looking up to the heavens for answers, so to speak, without seeking them ourselves? Our painting behind us, our painting behind the pulpit, has Jesus seemingly standing on a cloud with two angels, right? And you look up there, and that's what we see. <laughs> but there's a funny story behind that. There's actually a painting right below there. They did a renovation in 1969. There's a whole part of the painting down before it. That actually is the Ascension Day painting up there. Doesn't look like it because it looks like he's just hovering there and standing there right there in the clouds with the angels. But those are the two men in white robes that came and talked to the apostles. Well, they're wearing different colors, but it was artist interpretation, so you got to deal with artists, so that's okay. <laughs> but that is Jesus ascending into heaven. And the 11 disciples are down there below them looking up. And I think the crucial piece of this painting now is that the disciples are not there. I think it's an excellent Ascension Day painting because the disciples are no longer a focal point of the painting. They're gone, as Jesus had instructed them. Jesus sent them to Jerusalem and sent them into the world to spread the good news and the truth. Did you read that before about acting? about that, you know, where Jesus sends them all through Samaria and then going through to the ends of the world, it says. Judea, ends of the earth. They're not there. And maybe that's where it gives us a clue what Christ is telling us in this time, in this time of crisis. They listen to Jesus, listen to the truth. They left, they went back to the room where they were staying, and they immediately started acting. They had lost a disciple, remember Judas, he's gone. And so they elected, they, they acted and they elected Matthias to become one of the 12. They became the 12 disciples again. They no longer are looking up into the sky for answers. They left that spot in Bethany, they, they're gone. They have the Holy Spirit as we do, and as they acted. They acted up, so to speak. The Holy Spirit is an action verb. We, through the Spirit, feed the hungry here. We console those who mourn here. We clothe those who are naked, and we heal those who are sick, whether it's physically or mentally. We here at New Hanover Evangelical Lutheran Church, that is our mission, and we do it very well. And these are new times. Structures have completely disappeared and created anew. Like the disciples, we are no longer seen in a sanctuary of this historic building, as beautiful as it is. We cannot be in here at this time of this epidemic. So we are out in the world. Next week we'll be out in the parking lot. <laughs> Yay! But we are out in the world. We are no longer sit there staring up in the sky. We are acting. And we are not alone. In this whole mess, Jesus did as Jesus promised and has sent the Spirit. In each and every one of us, baptized members of Jesus Christ, we have the Holy Spirit in us. Jesus gives us the training and guidance in what we do when there is a crisis. I love the way the Bible is, is, is organized. You know, you have the four gospels, it's what Jesus did, but then, you know, we have the book of Acts, you know? And, it, and we have Acts, action, coming right after. So we have the handbook of Jesus before that, and then we have the plan, it's time to execute it. And that's what the book of Acts tells us about. The plan is simple. Comfort those who you love. Right in your own homes, you can take action. Feed the hungry. We do that through our food ministry. You can do it by sending donations and you can do it by donating food. You can do it by praying for us. 
We are healing the sick through our peer support ministry that's still meeting and still getting together and still listening to people and comforting and pointing them in directions to where they can get help. And we're comforting those who are grieving. Yes, the people are still dying and families are still grieving. And we can do that by sending them cards remotely or giving them a call and letting them know that we are still one community. And we are celebrating together. Are you getting those messages about the ones that are graduating from high school and from academies and from colleges and so forth? We can still send them cards and celebrate with them or call them. We recently had a Zoom one for a graduate. It was great. It's amazing what we are doing. We are acting up even though we are apart. So I leave you today. Instead of looking up and being motionless, as those in the painting, but they're gone, but they just stay up there, they'll be on these walls forever, motionless. Let's not be motionless. Let us instead look around us to find those whom we can serve and move to help them. In other words, let us all act up and ascend together. Amen. Let us join together and let us all sing, You Are Mine.
please join me in our sure and certain hope of Christ risen that we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us pray together as Jesus has encouraged us to pray for all those who are sick and are needy in this world. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Living God, you chose us to be your witnesses in this world. We pray for the church in every place and the congregations in our community. Especially, we pray for St. Luke's, St. Paul's, St. James, Hope Community, Faulkner Swamp UCC, Hope and New Hanover Methodist. Focus our hearts and minds on the ministry we share in your name, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, all creation sings to praise you. You delight in the oceans and the mountains are your throne. Teach us humility and respect for our home. Remind us that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Sovereign God, you rule the heavens, the earth, and the time itself. Make this a time of justice and peace and solidarity among all nations and people, so that the oppression and violence rule no more, that we may act up and ascend up in our Holy Spirit to fight injustice in this world and help the weak and those who are oppressed. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Tender and loving God, we wait with hope for your presence to heal us. We wait, but we do not sit still. We will act up and we will move. Bless us, restore us, and give us this peace. You know all the names who are suffering from whom we pray this day. We say loud now or silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gentle God, you guide us as we seek wisdom. We pray for teachers and professors and theologians, daycare workers, and all those charged with teaching the young and old. Give them endurance and persistence in their valuable work, Almighty God. Give both students and teachers patience and courage during this time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Infinite God, eternal God, your inheritance given to all your saints in your presence in our life and in our death. We remember before you with thanksgiving the faithful departed, especially we pray for Marcy Marks and Irene Allen. We pray for Debbie Salazzo and her family, and we pray also for Bill and Michelle Allen, and keep them all in your mercy, dear Lord, as they're grieving. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place for all whom we pray into your eternal care through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Well, normally we'd gather around and we uh, jubilee, we'd be holding hands and giving hugs and uh, sharing peace. So at this time, no, we are peace be with you and our peace be with you. But anyway. Uh, it's more than that. It's sharing God's hope and promise of peace. So, peace be with you. And also with you. At this time, we normally take our offering, but however, as you know, we don't do our offering right now. I just want to thank you because you've been so good. We've been getting more and more offerings in, and people are picking up on mailing them in. Also, you can drop them off in our fellowship hall door slot, and uh, there's a container there. You push it through the little mail slot that's just opposite the golf course. And, of course, you can go online and uh, sign up at our top at our webpage, 
newhanoverlutheran.org, and there's a giving section right at the top. You click on that, it takes you a few minutes, and you could be done for the rest of your life. You just figure out how much you want, and boom, it'll do it. Or you can just do it one time. We thank you for everything. Thank you very much, and uh, God bless you. At this time, get your bread and your favorite drink to uh, commune with each other and break bread and bring peace of Jesus Christ to your family and or yourself. And the night he was betrayed, our Lord took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And he gave thanks and gave it all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God's love is poured out for you in Christ. Open yourselves to receive it, and know that this is not virtual. But this is the real presence of Jesus Christ coming in your home, coming to you, breaking bread with you each and every time we invite Christ. Come, the table is ready. Let us pray. Like giving God, you have fed us with your word and with our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you have opened us to your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Well, it's the favorite time of your worship service. It is announcement time, and we do have many announcements for you. Um, I pray this message, first of all, find you our good friends in good health and spirit. I wish to share some critical updates for ministries and events here at New Hanover Evangelical Lutheran Church for this coming week between Memorial Day and then also through May 31st, Pentecost, as we celebrate. So thank you very much, first of all, for your generous op offerings and prayers and volunteering during these times of being a community apart. We just really, I just find it totally amazing. I have witnessed so much love in the outpouring of cards and, and how you have been so giving and helping one another. It's phenomenal. And not only do I see it, but other people are seeing it too by sending in and going, man, I, you, your church is really doing it. You, you guys are really being a light out there. So thank you for being part of this community. And we thank you for all of our, our friends and neighbors around here that are supporting us. Uh, the food ministry continues to grow. <laughs> I, I say that every week, but we just went over to 100 some meals a, a day, you know, and, and so that's a lot. And then we just uh, 100 people per day uh, uh, per feeding, and then we give a couple meals in there per day. And, and so what's happening is you, you multiply that maybe 1,400 per week. I mean, that's a lot. Or no, what the heck, what am I saying, you know? We, we just basically have 200, yeah, 1,400 a week. We just keep on growing. The shelter is witnessed an increase in women needing um, food lately and we have just reached out and we're helping out these different shelters and we're helping out more and more people and we had some uh, local, um, uh, so we had some members that had uh, extended family members that have come down with a virus, dear Lord, and we're helping them too. So know that the money and the food that you are giving and your prayers and your support, we are changing lives and we are healing the sick and we are just healing the souls as well. Our facility will not be a polling place for June 2nd. I hope you've been following that. Please check your mail if you're a Montgomery County resident on where your location will be. Also, you might find your, your poll and where it's located at moncopa.org and look in the document center part of that and it'll tell you a polling place consolidation plan and it'll direct you where you can go vote on June 2nd. Also, we're having, this is important, and outdoor service is going to be a drive-in service May 31st. 
Don't come on May 24th. Come on May 31st and at 9 a.m. And if you want to get there a little early and park your car, that's fine. But uh, be there. We'll start promptly at 9 a.m. Uh, we'll drive in. We'll have parking lot attendants. You drive in there. Uh, we'll give you the work trip sheets and you take them home. They're souvenirs, you know. They're going to be historical. I don't think, I hope and I pray we never have another time like this again in our lifetime. So there'll be souvenirs for you. Keep those uh, worship bulletins and those hymns uh, that we sing. And uh, please just follow the attendance, follow the rules. Uh, you get them in the mail. They'll be posted on our website and they'll be handed to you when you get there. Uh, follow the rules um, and let's just keep everybody safe. We're doing what we safely can do at this time and then keep everybody else safe so that when you come in safe, you leave here safe and it'll be out in the parking lot in your cars and we'll have an FM transmitter. You'll be able to turn on your radio and just hear my uh, voice if that's any benefit, but you'll be hearing our, our singers and our music once again, and just uh, let's worship together as a community once again in our parking lot right outside here. And finally, I pray you're finding some peace in all that's happening in the world. This week was especially hard for a lot of people. Um, I want to remind you that uh, we have a peer support ministry uh, that you can dial into and or go online and send them an email and help them. Uh, peer support ministries at newhanoverlutheran.org uh, and uh, you call here in the, in the 610-326-1335 and uh, you go with the appropriate extension and you can talk to them, they'll respond to you, they'll help you, um, as well as if you need counseling and spiritual counseling, I'm available as well at 610-326-1335 and I can be reached at extension one and you'll be able to get a hold of me. And uh, so if you're hurting spiritually or physically, uh, give us a call, let us help you. Um, we look forward to seeing you live soon. So we look forward to seeing you all of you on May 31st here in our parking lot as we celebrate Pentecost. And very special day, we'll have the confirmation students out there as well and they'll be receiving, becoming full members of our church as they affirm their baptism. So please come and join us on May 31st at 9 a.m.
at and after you witness this worship service and you feel the worship in your heart to share it with all creation and go outside and bless your part of creation that you call your home, your yard, your little garden out back, or maybe it's even an herbal garden on your windowsill. But uh, take this time to bless creation and everything that God has given us. So go in peace, be safe, love your neighbor any way you physically and mentally can at this time in this crisis. And uh, till next week, go get them. <laughs>